adding run-only users to the flow is exactly like adding co-owners. But there is one slight difference. First of all, you got to watch for those embedded connections again. But here is the difference. The run-only users run the flow directly from the flow environment, either from the email that they receive from Power Automate or they open the app, they open the Power Automate app and fire the flow. So basically, they are directly dealing with flow interface, which basically means now we have the option. So when I add another user, like user two, as run-only user, it means I can configure the flow in a way that's that I say, either let this user use these connections and get access to these resources through these connections. So basically this user can run this flow and can use the privileges of these internal connections to external resources. Or I can say, no, 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 no. I'm not gonna let you use my privileges. I can only let you run the flow, but for all the connections, you have to provide your own credentials which is amazing because I can comfortably go there and give access to 15 different users as run only. They all can run, but only the ones who are supposed to have access to these external resources can actually run the flow. Now let's go inside flow and see how we can do that. So we go again to our flow interface and I click on my flows. First of all, only the flows that they have this button icon or the flows that we can actually run them manually by pushing a button or through the Power Automate app can have the users as run only users. So all these ones are okay. This one that I've used it for Power Apps, definitely you cannot. The others are okay. This one that I created called Test Folder Move, Again, it has a SharePoint trigger. This cannot be done. So regardless, I go to one of them like get items from SharePoint. And as you can see, this one has two connectors. One of them is Office 365 Outlook for sending email. The other one is SharePoint for getting the items. Fantastic. Now I can add run only users. So let me click on edit and add another user here. So I'm searching for Jason Smith and I add this user here. Now, immediately it says for the connection to SharePoint, it must be provided by the user. So basically we are not worried about giving extra permission to that user through our flow. Or I can say use this specific connection. So Jason doesn't have access to SharePoint, but when he's running this flow, through this flow, can use my credentials and get the information from SharePoint. For sending email, now I really don't want to do that. I'd rather have this user come here and enter his credentials. And I click on save. Is it all good? Well, no, it is not. There is one issue here. If you remember when I was creating this Jason Smith, I gave this user the free flow license for this user to be able to use Office 365 Outlook. He must have a mailbox. So although here it accepts that technically Jason cannot run this. All right. Seems like run only flow is very easy. We just have flows that they have button. When the user pushes the button, the flow runs. And we can have users that can actually get to this flow and run it. And with this run only, we have the privilege to give the user the permission to use our connection, or we can ask them to enter their own authentication information for every connection that flow uses. And that makes these flows, these manual flows, 
something unique. Why is it important? Because there is a good chance that you want to create a flow that runs by pushing a button, especially during the development time, during testing and all those things. And later on, you want to replace that trigger with something else. Don't do that. Switching from button to other triggers can break your flow simply because of this reason, because the way that the security model, the way that the permission level is designed in it is totally different from all the other triggers. And Flow Designer at the moment that I'm talking to you and I'm recording this course, cannot handle switching it from one trigger to another trigger properly. So basically you design a flow, you build it, everything works fine by pushing a button, and then you want to take out that trigger and you replace it with another trigger. For example, the flow is called by Power Apps or as a web API or something like that, that may break the flow. And there is a good chance that it breaks the flow. So just as the final tip that you need to keep in mind, I close this chapter, do your quiz, and I'll see you in the next section.